Hi everybody, Gary Francione for The Abolitionist Approach. I received an email, a uh, somewhat lengthy email, from someone in Canada, and she asks what, in essence, are three uh, questions. The first one is, how I avoid burning out. She notes, you've been doing this work for several decades and you so show no signs of letting up. It's because I have no intention of letting up. Um, how do I avoid burning out? Well, I view it as I'm not the victim. I'm not the animal in the laboratory undergoing vivisection. I'm not the animal in the holding pen waiting to be slaughtered. I'm not the animal caught in a trap. I'm not the, the fish stuck in the net or with a hook in my mouth. I'm not the animal being used in the circus, the zoo, the rodeo, etc. Uh, I'm not the victim. And so I don't consider myself as having the right to burn out. I consider myself as having the obligation and indeed the privilege of getting up every day and promoting justice for the most vulnerable creatures on earth. So, so, you know, I just, this has worked for me. I understand it may not work for other people. And I understand that some people may just not be able to, to deal with this and may have to take time off and, and whatnot and quote, burn out. Uh, that's not happened with me, uh, in part because I really believe I have an obligation to do this. I'm not the victim. And as I say, I consider it a privilege to be able to get up every day and to, 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 to fight this fight. And, um, you know, and so I've avoided burnout up to this point. The second question she asks is um, more or less about how to deal with the fact that, um, or asking me whether I find that I, uh, I find myself feeling alienated because people disagree with me in terms of the, you know, the, most of the world consumes animal products. Um, actually, I would take that further and say, Yes, even animal advocates disagree with me. The people who promote welfare reform and single-issue campaigns and reducitarianism and all that stuff, they don't, you know, they have a problem with me as well. So, um, you know, how do I deal with the fact that people get upset with me about these sorts of things? And the answer is, look, if you take a strong moral position about anything, I don't care whether it's about animals or about humans, most people don't take strong moral positions about anything in their lives. They care about morality, but most people don't take strong moral positions. They take more middle of the road positions and they take more, you know, they, they don't take strong or radical moral positions. The abolitionist approach is a radical position. So, you know, at, at some point in time, you have to ask yourself, what's important to me? Who am I? What's important to me? You know, is, is, is it more important to me when I had to make the decision in the 90s, for example, when I was involved with the animal movement, the, with the um, institutional animal movement, and was spending much of my time dealing with people who were welfareists and who promoted single-issue campaigns, and I recognized that as, you know, as I was developing my ideas, people were not happy about those ideas, and I had to make a decision. Was, you know, what was more important to me? Um, the approval of my friends uh, who were promoting welfareism and single issue campaigns or the ideas as I saw them in terms of what I thought was was right and wrong morally. Uh, you know, you, you have to decide who are you, what's important to you. And, you know, that's a decision that only you can make for yourself. I made it for myself. And, you know, my view is I promote what I think is morally right. If people don't agree with me, that's their choice. The third question uh, that she asks is about relationships, how to deal with relationships um, with people who aren't vegan. Look, I, 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 I am lucky in that I have um, a life partner who is also a vegan and, and who feels as strongly about these things as I do. Uh, what would I do if I weren't in that position? Well, I'm, I don't know that I could be in that position because I feel so strongly about this uh, issue. I don't think that I could be with someone who was not a vegan and who didn't share these views in the same way that I could not be with someone who was a racist or uh, an anti-Semite or, you know, a sexist. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, when it comes to fundamental rights, I, I would have to have, for me, I have to have a, a basic agreement with someone that I have a close relationship with. And so if if someone, you know, starts telling racist, and I, I, I would be horrified if I had a relationship with someone who started telling racist jokes or who expressed anti-Semitic uh, 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 sentiments. Um, similarly, I couldn't live with somebody who wasn't a vegan. Now, I understand 
that you know there are a lot of folks out there and they have relationships with people who aren't vegan well i i believe that you, you know you really do need to try to educate people because for most people they don't really see it's not because the problem is invisible the problem is most people buy into some form of the welfareist ideology so you need to educate them but you also need to be clear that all animal exploitation all of it all of it you know all of the eating the wearing the using of animals is a repudiation of the idea that animals have moral value. You've got to be clear about that, but you've also got to educate people about how you've come to that conclusion. But at some point, you know, you have a relationship with someone, you spend a lot of time educating that person about why that person should go vegan and why animal exploitation is wrong. If that person basically says, look, I, I don't care, then you have a decision to make about how you feel about that relationship. And I, I'm not a, a, a counselor in that regard. I think that there are issues. I think there are important issues. But in, in certain ways, I don't see them as any different from any other important moral issues. You know, I mean, that in that in that for me as an individual, I could not have a close relationship with someone who believed in uh, uh, fundamental rights violations on the, uh, with respect to humans or non-humans. But in any event, uh, so these are, these are difficult questions, I agree. But remember, you want to avoid burning out? Don't think of yourself as a victim. Are people upset with you because you're a vegan and they're not? Well, you know, or people are upset with you because you promote veganism as a moral baseline and their welfare is, the answer is, who are you? What's important to you? What matters to you morally? You know, and if, if those, if the ideas of justice for non-humans matters, if that, if that idea matters to you, uh, then you have to decide, does it matter to you more than the approval of your friends or, or the approval of family members who don't agree with your veganism? Those are just questions you have to ask yourself. And the third issue, how do we deal with relationships? Please, if you have a relationship with someone who is not a vegan, work on that person. Spend as much time as you can in a, in, a, in a constructive dialogue trying to get that person to understand why these issues are so important to you. At some point, if the person says, I don't care, you need to make a decision. But that, would, that, that problem, that choice that you have to make, uh, is a choice that you'd have to make in any other situation involving fundamental rights violations. For information about veganism, go to our website, howdoigovegan.com. Thank you very much for listening.